Hello, I'm Chris. And I'm Tom. And you're watching that review show. Yeah. Tom, what are we going to be talking about today? A fascinating film by the name of Monkey Bone. Stu Miley is the creator. The man behind the monkey. Monkey Bone is his creation. I love your way. <laughs> Stu was about to have it all until it all came crashing down. No! Tell us, Chris, what is Monkey Bone about? So, Monkey Bone is about an illustrator who has just achieved fame and hates it straight away, uh, and he gets into a car accident and goes into a coma, and then he's trying to escape his coma, but his alter ego monkey bone, who is sort of manifested in the coma world, escapes instead and then wreaks havoc in the real world, and he has to try and get out and stop him and reclaim his girlfriend. And body. And body, and... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Did I forget to mention that this film cost $75 million to make and took less than $8 million at the box office? You, you, you did forget to mention that until now. And I guess that plot summary was really messy, and that's part of the reason why this film is so terrible, and part of the reason why uh, it's got problems. I mean, let's just start off. The premise is that this guy is overcoming his prior depression by... Right, okay. It's set up early in the film that Brendan Fraser's character, the illustrator, uh, used to have some depression. In fact, we're shown some of the artwork he did, which is actually really flipping cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bridget Fonda, who he found, helped him get over that by telling him to just draw with the other hand to see what would come out. And that's where the character that he's created, Monkey Bone, uh, came from, his left-handed phase. So that Monkey Bone is this sort of coping with depression mechanism. Mm -hmm. And it would appear that when he is then put into a coma, it is Monkey Bone that he's fighting against in order to get out. So in overcoming Monkey Bone he is also fighting against his own depression in a sense. If, we, if we're looking at this film as an allegory. The main issue with this film thematically is if it's meant to be him overcoming his depression, yes. he should be overcoming all the scary nightmare stuff he was drawing with his right hand. Yes. But instead of that, he's overcoming the character that helped him overcome his depression. Yes. In fact, there is a moment in the film where his previous artwork comes back to haunt him. Mm -hmm. um, there's this large plot conceit, which should be mentioned uh, in order to talk about this, which is that his girlfriend, <laughs> played by Bridget Fonda, uh, is a doctor. She creates this serum that enhances nightmares and then uses it on him when he's in his coma to try and scare him awake because she realises his sleep pattern is a repeating nightmare. Do they, though, any of the doctors in this film, at any point use the word serum or do they all just say nightmare juice? They all call it nightmare juice. Nightmare juice? Nightmare juice. The nightmare juice. So a professional doctor creates nightmare juice, patented trademark. She gives it to him, and then that causes him to slip back into his old depression, essentially, during the nightmare. He, he has a hallucination of seeing that picture, and... And Monkey Bone saves him from it. Which is baffling, because surely that's... The well, no, I guess, no, that makes sense, because Monkey Bone is what saved him from his nightmares before. But then Monkey Bone betrays him. Immediately, and, yeah. And then he has to try and get rid of Monkey Bone. So the plot just doesn't really work on that level. No. And in terms of the tone of this film, similarly to Death to Smoochie, this film does not know what the f*** it is doing. Mm. It's... A double plot problem again. And the tone, it's... It's rude, it's raunchy, yeah. it's totally outrageous. It's none of these things. Some of the crudest laugh out loud humour since South Park. It's not really that crude, it's not really that rude, but the first sort of comedy scene in the film involves a child at school getting an erection. Yeah. 
over his teacher's bingo wings. Which is good and creepy. Yeah, however, the problem with this film, like Death to Smoochie, is it's got... That is its humour. It's, it sells itself as being a raunchy comedy. But at the same time, the whole thing is played, acted, lit, framed, everything, scripted, like a children's film. As if it's pointed towards children. In fact, it's got, in places... A very Tim Burton outlook. It's like creepy, but for kids. Um, yeah, and but and you doesn't achieve it well though. Brendan Fraser pretending to be a man who's been inhabited by a cartoon monkey because <laughs> Monkey Bone escapes the dream world and gets into Brendan Fraser's body. Hilarity ensues. No, it doesn't. Um, and that that doesn't work for for two reasons. Firstly, the main reason being that Brendan Fraser. Just isn't very funny. Like no, he, I can't, always, he can't act funny. No, I always thought he was a, a comedy actor, but as it turns out, he's actually terrible at doing comedy. Mm. Um, and the second thing that ruins it is that all the other characters in the real world, save his fiance, are cartoonish. Yes, they are cartoony characters. His his friend, his agent, runs around screaming naked. Yeah. Um, you've got the doctors at the end hurdling over gurneys and stuff to get to him. They're being cartoon characters. Even like the old people in the scene where they're giving yeah. out the monkeys that fart, clambering over each other to get to it. So the fact that there is a rogue cartoon character in the real world has no impact because everyone in the real world acts like a cartoon character. Well, and if it, and if it was a good cartoon, yep. I'd be okay with that. Like the fervor around the latest big thing. But the problem is the you see. Oh, an episode, it's awful. The cartoon is awful. Yeah, you see an episode. The first scene of the film is the the kind of pilot episode of the monkey bone cartoon and it's terrible and i, I really thought, hated the animation as well i just didn't like looking at it, it yeah like, oh. i thought it was going to be he's down on his luck this is his big break and everyone hates it because it's shit but actually <laughs> everyone sits there and loves it and we're there going oh oh this film isn't joking about how bad that is yeah so yeah. even from that initial scene the, the tone shift. Yeah, well, they pitch it wrong. They, they make you think you're meant to be laughing at how bad it is, but you're meant to be laughing at it. Because it's so funny and everyone loves it. And so straight away you're just like, oh. oh. Yeah, the film shuts you out. Scene one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> door. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. It, it's you versus the film from there on. Yes, I, I have to say, sorry, I'm just going to interject with... Go on. We watched this a while ago. Yeah. And then we decided to review it. And you asked me how long it was. And I said, well, I don't know, I think it's about two and a half hours, wasn't it? Because it was this horribly... Oh, the length of the film, right, yeah. This horribly kind of dragged out, two plots going on thing. And I looked at the back of the box and it's 88 minutes. Uh, by an hour, I looked, because you had the track counter on. By an hour, I felt like I'd done two. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's so dense. There is just so much going on in this plot that's been crammed together. And the two plots have totally different tones. Mm -hmm. You've got the whole nightmare world and him overcoming depression, essentially, is what it sets out to do but doesn't, uh, which has one very Tim Burton-y tone. And then you've got the other story, which is probably the one that they set out to tell, which is Monkey Bone in the Real World and Hilarity ensues. You know, Brendan Fraser actually inhabited by a monkey. We've seen lots of films like that before. Mm. Um, it's crammed. To the eyeballs, with and shit. impossible to follow in that sense. Uh, yeah, and it's all rubbish uh, and doesn't work. This is because of the performances. The people acting in this film either didn't care, were miscast, misdirected, or were just awful in the first place. So yeah, there's a few decent actors in this film. Monkey Bone is voiced by John Turturro. I love John Turturro. Now, funnily enough, John Turturro is not credited on the back of the box. Are you kidding? <laughs> no. He's the voice of the title character. Yeah. Jesus. You said it, man. Nobody fucks with the Jesus. Well, look at Giancarlo Esposito as well, who most people probably know now from um, Breaking Bad. He plays Gustavo Freen, the chicken man. I suppose in this, though, both of them, they, they play their parts really well because they're good actors. Well, they play their parts as the parts were meant to be played. Yes. Unfortunately, both those parts are horrible. I think um, Fonda does as well. Bridget Fonda, she plays a part, is how it's going to be played. Chris Kattan, who only comes at the end, like, rules it. Yeah. He steals the show from Brendan Fraser, who isn't a good comedy actor. You know, Chris Kattan has got... I'm particularly thinking of the scenes of him taping himself up. They're just <laughs> brilliant. Like, yeah. Great physical comedy, really fun to watch. No, I think... Brendan Fraser is funny because I always thought 
like I said earlier, that he's a comic actor. But actually, the film that I know him from the best and really like him in is The Mummy. Mm. And in that, he's sort of funny, but he's the lead actor. He's He's got lines. He's got, white, like, wisecracks. He's a bit Peter yes. Parker. Yeah, a little bit sort of, yeah, Indiana Jones, Peter Parker, that kind of wisecracking adventurer type. Um, there's another actor in this turd of a film um, who is a comic actor, uh, but is either horribly miscast because of her style or was told to act wrong. Uh, it's Megan Mullally. M most people won't know who that is, but she was in uh, a show called Will and Grace, which was very popular. And in it, she was this sort of snide, bitchy woman character with a very high nasal voice. And she acts the exact same person in this story. Um, completely inappropriate. It's completely inappropriate because she's supposed to be a sort of... Well, she's she's the sister character to to Brendan Fraser's character, and they apparently made a pact one day that if ever they were injured in an accident and they were going, to, it was going to go on for ages. There was a coma that they had agreed to switch each other off after a month. At three most. months. I it was three months at most. Um, okay, so that's fine. That she's honouring his wishes, and she says to Bridget Fonda, who's you know a terribly sympathetic character, actually, you know, we've got to switch him off. But she doesn't sit her down and go, now listen. We made this pact. I've got to honour this these wishes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but that's the hard truth. She's actually a bit like, oh, I'm afraid the life support machine will be quite inoperational <laughs> by the time the end of three months arrives. She's totally evil about yeah. it. She has, when she first mentions it, it's kind of, you think, right, she's in the middle of her grief, whatever. Yeah. But then there's a scene later on where she leans in through the window of the hospital room, she's smoking, and she's like, Well, it's been three months, and, um... I gave the order. <laughs> Gonna kill your boyfriend! Yeah. <laughs> yeah what? <laughs> it's just bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's like, why is she so horrible? And that leads into another point that irritates me. Stu has been in this dreamland Tim Burton world for three months by the time he actually decides to do anything, because he's in there, he's at the bar, he's moping. Oh, oh, in his, in his coma. Yeah, yeah. His coma psyche is, yeah, he's doing nothing for three months. Yeah, and by the time he actually decides to leave, I don't know if it's because, no, is it because he's, is aware that he's going to have the plug pulled, or is it just before he's aware? But either way, what's he been doing for three months? Because you get a couple of shots of him at the bar moping around with Monkey Bone, and then suddenly he's like, I've got to get out, I've got to get out. And then he finds out that they're going to pull the plug tomorrow. And it's like, what were you doing for three months, just sitting around feeling sorry for yourself? It doesn't show us, and it doesn't even indicate. It's one of those Dark Knight Rises time lapses, you know, like just suddenly, suddenly it's later. Whoa, really? Yeah. I didn't feel that change, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so should we go on to WTF moments? WTF moments of Monkey Bone. So we've discussed the, the, the music God, shift. God, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> the music shift in that scene that we showed. Um, Whoopi Goldberg plays Death, <laughs> but Death is in the dreamland, even though that's like its coma world. It's like a stopping station, and some people make it like back limbo out. limbo type thing, yeah. Yeah, and some people die. She plays Death and is just Whoopi Goldberg, who I'm sure used to have credibility, but I'm more and more now unconvinced as to whether or not she ever did. The last days of Pompeii. Watch. <laughs> nice eruption. Ah, thank you. Totally miscast. Um, Th that's a WTF in itself. Yeah, quite. Um, so you've got, you've got that WTF moment. There's a moment where... Uh, Bridget Fonda's character, Julie, decides to try and wake Brendan Fraser up from his coma by giving him the nightmare juice. Mm, that's to be said, yeah. Um, and shocking him into waking up. And when you cut to the shot of her and her assistant, I guess, about to administer the nightmare juice, it's lit in purple light. Oh, it's got that very odd... It looks like a Goosebumps episode. <laughs> It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like, where did this come from? Yeah, you're, Cartoony. you're so WTF. Yeah. Um, and again, that, that ties into the whole tone of it. You're like, this is, this is like the kind of, uh, the, the cliff point, the knife edge, the turning point of the film. Can she wake him up with a nightmare juice? And it's lit like a, either a comedy sketch or a really low budget children's horror TV show. Uh, what else was there? Well, that this reminds me, actually, that... that um, her and her assistant talking is what made us realise that this film definitely fails the Bechdel test. Because although they are having a conversation, that character is not named, and all they're talking about is Brendan Fraser. Yes. It's, it's sad. This, this film has no representation of women. And then at the end of the film, 
I thought maybe Bridget Fonda was going to step in and save the day because Brendan Fraser gets out of the dream world but into the body of this corpse. She comes up with a solution, it just doesn't... Involve her at all. Yeah, it doesn't involve her at all. Yeah. <laughs> the corpse makes his case to her, she believes that it is actually Stu, and then she's just like, okay, go and save the day, Stu, even though you're literally in a body with organs falling out all over the place. It has another WTF moment. The reanimation of Brendan Fraser. At the very end, he gets his body back because Monkey Bones left it. Yeah, so at this point in the film, the doctors have been chasing the corpse around and they're like, hey, hands off, this is our corpse. As they go to pick the corpse up, Brendan Fraser sits up from the gurney and all the doctors scream and run away. So they, they, they weren't worried about it the first time when they were literally pulling organs out of yeah, someone. I mean, it, spontaneous remission of death occurs quite often. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like... Uh, that's just like a... Uh, you didn't think it through. Okay, so um, I know you want to talk about the handshake bum shake, but the scene that that comes in is actually a scene that's got some very stylistic cleverness in it. What's interesting about this is, along with a few other places in the film, there's a clever bit of camera work, or just a moment that's, it might not have taken a lot of thought, but they did it well. Uh, and that's that we're going to see the camera sweep to Brendan Fraser. They have a conversation for a while, and when they sweep back, everyone's changed, as if to show that this is a sort of ongoing cycle. It's lovely, it's very, very yeah. nice bit of work. And why didn't the rest of the film do things like this? Yeah, that was a nice little scene transition. Um, but the thing that annoys me about that pitching scene... Yeah, go on is that with the first team, which I think are from like a burger joint or something, they finish their deal and they shake hands. Then you get this nice transition where it goes to him and then back to the, other, the, the new team who are from the toy company. And when they finish that pitch and he agrees to it, they, I think one of the guys puts his hand out to shake hands and Monkey Bone says, Shake on it! That's not the way we do things in Monkey Land. In Monkey Land, we rub our bottoms together. Huh? You heard the man! Get your asses on the table! And I'm just watching this film, and I'm thinking to myself, and I'm uh, terribly sorry for my use of French, why the fuck then <laughs> did you not f***ing rub butts with the first f***ing team? Where's this suddenly come from? I know from? what you mean. If it's going to be a jokey thing, it has to at least be consistent. Yeah. Uh... Where does that come from? If it had been two scenes completely separate in the film, I'd have gone, oh, they forgot that they sat that up earlier and then... Or they didn't set that up earlier. Same scene. But it's the very same scene, and you're just like... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I hate... Oh. Go on, go on, let it out. I hate it when films... <laughs> I don't know if they even are treating us like an idiot, or if they're just idiots that made it. But it's like... There's no consistency. They, they, they just expect you to just sit there and go... Okay. <laughs> and everything they do is supposed to go, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. It's like, no, I'm watching this film. I'm not just looking at a screen. I'm actually watching the film. Hate it though I do. It's all right, it lost millions. It lost millions. Another thing, sorry, that I've just remembered from looking at the back of this box, that, again, I would have really liked if it was in a different film, mm. but there's a scene, there's a sexy cat lady in the dream world, and she's yes. really hot, and there's lots of shots of her boobs and stuff, so again, yeah, you're yeah, like... Yeah, deliberately points about them, and all it needs is Bob Hoskins going, whew. Again, you're like, is this for adults or children? I don't know what's happening. It, I don't know what this film thinks it is. And that's the main problem. The film doesn't know what it is. It's supposed to be about a cartoon escaping to the real world, but that's only half the plot, and everyone in the real world is a cartoon anyway, so that doesn't work. Then you've got the weird plot of him escaping the dream world, and that's, that's sort of dragged out, but at the same time so, skipped over. Plots clash, a bit like Death to Smoochie, complete wreck. What about tone and humour, Chris? Is that a problem? There was tone and humour? Yeah, it doesn't know what tone or humour it has, yeah. No, there's, there's nothing... It goes all over the place. So, yeah, I hate this film. Um, saving grace is that it's 88 minutes long. After one hour, it felt like two hours. The, the 88 minutes is irrelevant here. This film is a, a, a TARDIS of but time. It's, just it's imagine It's absurdly though. long for 88 minutes. Just imagine if it was 120 minutes. <sighs> Chris, is this worse than Death to Smoochie? I think it's the same in a lot of ways. That that weird kiddie tone thrown in with stuff that's not really kiddie tone. A comedy that doesn't work. In terms of actual filmmaking, I... No, it's not as bad as Death to Smoochie. I, do you know what, though? I think Death to Smoochie at least had a concept. Well, this had... Well, like a solid concept, should we this say. This had what feels like a concept that they had to trim down a lot yeah. to get it made. Death to Smoochie, the reason I'm saying Death to Smoochie is worse is for things like the uh, retarded boxer character. <laughs> hey, don't go anywhere, 
a smooch. Uh, I'll be right back. I have to like, take a dump. Oh, yeah. Because that's horribly insulting. Yes, it's horribly insulting. This film doesn't laugh at gay people. It doesn't... No, you're right, actually. It's quite PC. It's not, it's not as mean-spirited. It doesn't laugh at racial minorities. It doesn't laugh at women. Women aren't particularly well represented, but at least they're not the butt of any jokes. Yeah, true. Uh, in fact, Bridget Fonda is a highly sympathetic character in this film, and I was rooting for her the whole time. The only scene in but this... But she does nothing. Yeah, the only scene in this where you've got kind of exploitation of sexy ladies is... Monkey Bones sort of fantasy dream. It's through the lens of Monkey Bone. Yeah, uh, whereas yeah, so in, you sort of understand that that's him being messed up. In yeah. Death to Smoochie, it's through the lens of Bob Hoskins, who's supposed to be a real person. <laughs> Sorry, you're Danny, saying Bob Hoskins now. Danny DeVito, who's supposed to be a real person in the real world, and that whole scene is just like, ooh, look at women. Y yeah, that, but the, that scene was a scene embedded in another scene for no reason. Don't get me wrong, this film is awfully made. The cinematography is really flat, apart from those couple of moments. It's, it's poorly made, it's poorly acted, it's poorly scripted, it's a, a horrible, horrible film, but at least it's not insulting to people who cannot defend themselves like Death to Smoochie was. So, uh, I think by saying you hate this movie, you're being insulting to a film that cannot defend itself. I feel just horribly sorry for it. I feel a, a deep well of sympathy for for this film. I think it wanted to be something good, and it's just ghastly crap. Uh, yeah, well, it utterly sucks. Feel what you will, you bastard. <laughs> you enjoying that? So, what score would you give it? Monkey Bone is indestructible. Oh my God! It is. <laughs> All right, what score would you give it? <sighs> I should have thought about this before we started filming. Okay, well, I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three because I'm pretty sure that the director, Tom Selleck, <laughs> Henry Selleck, um, steals water. No, he really liked it. I think he read a comic book. Um, and loved it and then the concept got twisted and changed the more and more studios got involved or whatever I don't know quite exactly how it happened but I think someone really cared and, and had a really big vision of essentially a dual plot that's, that's rambling and, and had lots of interesting influences and produced a pile of shit so uh, it's sad I'll give it a three because it's trying because they, they got some things right they, John Turturro as Monkey Bones voice this is a great choice um, Chris Kattan should have been in the whole film because he's really good as well mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't hate it I, I feel sad for it I would rather watch this again than Jurassic World what's your score? what's your score? what's your score? <laughs> what's your score? I did it! Oh. sorry What's your, score? What's, yeah. your, what's your score? 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 I'm actually, I'm going to go with you on this one. Three. There were, on a purely base level, yes. attractive girls to look at. There were a couple of moments of cinematography. There were some good comic moments, none of which involved the lead actor. Yeah. Um, and I liked the dream world. I liked his nightmare picture, especially when it came to life. I loved that. It's a shame that that wasn't more of an important part of the film, because it, it starts and then it ends, and you're like, oh, yeah. oh that um, was meant to be important. It's a terrible, terrible film, but like I say, it's, it's better than Death to Smoochie. It deserves a few points, like you say, for trying. It feels like it was trying, and it just, for budget reasons or whatever, fell short of its... Uh, let me ask you a question. Go on. If a film like this, where you've got... To be fair, loads of visual effects, loads of special effects. You've got animatronics, you've got CG, which back in 2001 wasn't cheap. Mm. How does this film cost less to make than Jack and Jill? <laughs> Three out of ten. 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 What are we going to do with it? I think we should just put it back where we found it. I think that's probably a good idea. Okay. All right. Come on, monkey bone.
Return from whence you came. Nothing in here will ever see the light of day. No. Oh!